Oh, here we are. Time for another vlog. There are people around me doing things. Uh, they'll be in shortly. Um, but we can finally, finally, finally talk about this crazy, crazy game we've been, uh, you know, dropping hints on since as early as Reanimator's Kickstarter on the live feed. We were like, what was it like? We were talking about it and trying to give it away. Um, yeah. And so we finally can talk about Terminator. Terminator Genesis. Now here's the here's the thing. Here's the first thing about this. Terminator Genesis. People are like, oh my god, just let the movie die. It's like the worst movie ever. Why to God? Why God? Oh why God. And all I gotta say is, um, there might be things. Did you like the first 15 minutes of Terminator? Yeah, did you like the first 15 minutes when they're just blowing up machines and getting blown up and stuff? I mean, that is like probably the best. Just the straight up post apocalyptic part. Yeah, like that's, you know. Um, this is only taking place in 2029. That's it. We're not jumping into 1984 or 1997, was it? Whatever 2017. You know. Which, I mean, I really like the movie. I'm one of the few. I mean, did you, did you guys like it? I really like Everyone it. here unanimously thinks it's cool. I like the movie. It was good. I mean, okay, yeah. There's. I mean, you got problems? Let's comment. You know, downgrade whatever you want to. Let's just have a let's have a bash. Let's have a fight. I mean, there's lots of problems, but aren't there problems in every movie? I mean, if you want, I could sit here and pick apart Empire Strikes Back and just tell you all about the things that were wrong with that movie. <laughs> like every movie has its problems. And Terminator Genesis compared to Terminator 2, which if you really want me to, I can pick apart Terminator 2. But I mean like, Terminator Genesis, yeah, it had its problems. But I mean, uh, I mean, this is the license that we have to work with. That's our confines. If we had a choice, it would just be Terminator and have everything Terminator oriented, but different companies and, and, and different licensors own different properties, and so this is what we're working with. But the coolest part is, is that the, I think we can all unanimously agree that the 2029 part was one of the coolest parts. I mean, you get to see guns blazing off and tanks exploding and Terminators just kicking butt. That's what you want. This is what we want to see. So you're going to see this. That's what this game is about. This game is quite literally just 100% 2029. Just Battlefield 2029. Uh, and it's pretty cool. It's really cool. So it kickstarts on April 9th, which is just like Monday. Uh, Josh is over here right now uh, on our war table, and he is setting up the latest, really, really good quality. Can you bring over some samples to show everybody? Yeah. Some really good quality. Um, you can even show some of it if you like. There's have a lot over here. All right, here we got. Oh, we got a tile. Okay, look. How sexy is Where's this? Where's the iconic one? There you go. There's one you want. How sexy? Ooh. The time machine room. The time machine room. How sexy is this? So this is like, this, all this illustration, all this artwork was sourced. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All of this hard work and all this illustration was originally done by yours truly, Josh Turkson. Um, from the Vanner Studios. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. Uh, you can't really, I don't think the camera can really pick up on the details, but it's like little computer hubs here and stuff. We've got these crazy cool laser sight walls. We've got um, the time machine itself. We've got rubble and stuff from the battlefield, the, the, the remainders of the, uh, the nuclear holocaust that went off. Josh, even from a distance, those terrain markings you did are really clear. Oh yeah, so clear. The blue are the different zones, and the red is the, the defined area of the walls. Anyway. Um, There's a big difference there. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's really cool. Um, and so it's all 2029. Here's what's cool about this. Okay, point number one. <clears throat> Arnold Schwarzenegger, sorry. The T-800, before I get into some sort of whoops licensing war here, uh, the T-800 Guardian character that we're choosing, uh, that, that you get to play as a character, uh, is pretty much Arnie as the Terminator. Oh, thank you. Pretty much Arnie as the Terminator, but he's in combat gear, which is first time seeing this. He is a combat Terminator. Uh, quite, could, quite, could quite possibly be the same T-800 that they sent back uh, to 1997. Could be. Could be. We can't, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, we're full of enigmas, right? So, um, yeah, so. Uh, the futures can be rewritten. Exactly. So the Guardian Terminator is, uh, you get to play Arnie, which is, which is so, so awesome. And um, yeah, so that's, that's one cool factor. The other cool factor is, I mean, hello, Steve Argyle. 
This guy, my God, look at this artwork. So sexy. So all of this artwork is completely originally done. So it's all been re-graphed, remade. Uh, he, all of these these little endoskeletons pop out, and they've got their own little their own little color, and they got the shine. The the, the Terminator face, this this giant hell, um, the, the the skull is. It's all been well done. It's been brushed up. It's super chromey. Um, we've got all the characters that were done. These were based off of the model, the sculpts, and he just he he textured them up, and they're so good. And uh, all of the artwork in this game is 100% uh, original. So all of the, the art assets, the, the icons, uh, everything, it's all following the brand guide that were given by the, the lovely licensor Skydance. And it was created, all of these, these graphics and stuff are all created by Josh Dirksen, uh, Lynn Vanderian, and uh, Steve Argyle. Um, honorary Lynn Vanderian for Which making... Which like hundreds or so cards in the game. Oh god, so there's hundreds of cards in the game. They're all, all of the artwork of the cards, the, the guns, the equipment, whatever, it's all 100% made by Josh. Uh, well, brand new original content. We, we got a few from, uh, here's a good example here. We got a few that were film assets. Oh yeah, out. sorry. We had film assets. So this is the, the T-800's plasma cannon, or just anybody's plasma cannon? Yeah, you can find that. That's a gun you can shoot. You can find a T-800's plasma cannon. All these like cool, and these are good quality cards. So I mean, this is like, almost like, anyway. It's really smooth. Nice perfect. Oh, I love this. You can hear it, like, you can just hear it so good. So, um, so that's the next cool factor. So cool factor one is, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Guardian. Uh, we've got, um, the next cool factor is that inside the mission book that you're gonna play, you're going through the first 15 minutes of the movie, but we've, we've extended it so you get hours and hours of play. And what's, <laughs> Really cool about that is that there's all kinds of brand new fiction written for that. And all the fiction is written in the words of the four characters you can play. So you can play as Alex, aka Skynet, spoiler. Um, you've got, there's the mission guide. This is great. Let's look at the hand I'm walking yeah. Aaron's not in this video. I'm around. <clears throat> He's here. He's going to come in. Um, you got cool art. You got, uh, so each of these missions, you've got um, all the voices and stuff. You know, we fell into our seats in the back of the battered 6x6 six six truck as it sped away from the hell maze of tunnels and machines. You know, this is good stuff. Um, all written by John Helfers. Uh, John Helfers being the, uh, the editor-in-chief for, for uh, Catalyst Publishing, and uh, he's done all the Battletech and Shadowrun stuff out there. Fiction is great. I'm gonna take a sip of my tea. And then, if the fiction that you're gonna get uh, in the mission guide isn't cool enough for the most iconic characters in Terminator history, we're going to give you the next wave of the most iconic characters in Terminator history. Um, we have the expansion, which is pretty much a standalone game. It could be, but it's not. It's uh, not. It's, like, it's need, close. It doesn't have... It's missing some of the core. You, you need a lot of the Terminator minis. Yeah, you need the Terminator this minis. This has more options. But you can, by the way, when it launches their add-ons. You can actually, as an optional buy, get a whole other set of Terminator minis, which, which are useful. You can have them just because who doesn't want like dozens of little Terminator minis. But, uh, you want to make the game harder? You can make the game harder. We actually have modes that you can just keep throwing Terminator minis in there. But this thing, okay, so this is the big reveal because uh, we've talked about it, but I don't think we've actually shown. Have we shown anything about this? Uh, I don't believe so. No, because you can't see the Kickstarter page. But this is what, this is what we're talking about. So Terminator Genesis, oh, 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 look at that. That is not the T-800's skull. That is the T-3000's skull, or Skynet itself. He's a mean looking guy, eh? And then this particular expansion is not called Rise of the Resistance, but it's called The Fall of Skynet. And there's all kinds of new characters. Here's what's cool about this. 100% new content. New, original, gorgeous content. What does that mean? That means new characters, a new unit, and what are they doing? Well, I'm glad you asked. They are Team Colorado. So if any of you have watched Terminator Genesis, or are about to because of this video, um, in the first 15 minutes, there's a crazy scene, spoiler alert, where <coughs> Basically, Connor and uh, John Connor and Kyle Reese are about to get shot up by a, a real big spy. Was it the spider tank? Yeah. It's about to just take them out, and then the spider tank and all the terminators and all the lasers and everything just just shut down. And you hear 
Colorado team successful or something like that. That's the quote. Yeah. And that's it. So you know that Team Colorado was off taking down Skynet's mainframe in order to shut the power down on some of the, the machines in order for them to access the time machine. We are bringing you those missions. You get to play as these characters here, and these characters here are the Colorado team. And it comes with a mission rule book, and the mission book has all kinds of new missions completely created by Josh and the team. Uh, Josh I mean, basically- I a bunch of them too, but- Yeah, oh, no, I mean like I'm talking about the actual mission, like mechanic oh, programming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the, but the, 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 all of the fictional content is John Helfer's, I believe, and he yeah. just killed it. So you get all kinds of new character voices, you get to hear what's happening in Colorado while everything else is going down in LA, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So, Terminator Genesis, follow Skynet. You totally want to take the pledge that will get you both of these products. Um, because that's just, like, I mean, I don't, I, if you're a fan of Terminator at all, this is the product you want because it's all brand new stuff and we all want new content. So it's not just Genesis, it's the fall of Skynet. It's not just Rise of the Resistance, it's the fall of Skynet. So good, so good. You've got like, you got like the T-3000 back there. He's the big bad, you got, you got T-800s with double plasma guns. These guys are going dirty hairy on you. This is good. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. And the artwork is really good too. Brand new characters. Was it Captain Michael Arthur? You've got uh, Luke Robert. You got Steve Andrew and Chris Andrew. Chris Andrew and Steve Andrew. And you've got uh, Gwen Charlotte, which is the girl's name. And there you have it. Terminator Genesis discussion complete. Um, Lots of crazy stuff going on. So right now, just today, uh, or yesterday, launched uh, Angry Joe's and Jasco Games Street Fighter, the miniatures combat game. It's, it's awesome. If you gotta spend your money, I'm telling you, spend it on Terminator on Monday. But if you've got extra cash, totally go back their game. In fact, you should just overextend like the rest of North America and just buy both. Right? Yep. It makes sense. I mean, you're gonna, it's April. Spend money. You know, while you're at it, there's other games you can buy too. But definitely tax buy in. Tax return money. I'm sorry? Tax return money. Yes, tax, it's tax return money. Take your tax return, divide it up, put half on Terminator, and then half on Street Fighter. That's what you gotta do, straight up. Uh, there's, anyways, the Street Fighter game, let's talk about it. Really cool. Joe's done some good stuff with it. Uh, the miniatures are like jar gargantuan minis. I mean, you know, we've got the, we've got the regular size minis, but they've got these like full size miniatures. They're massive, and so they're you know they come in the game and they got a cool terrain and it's like a big brawling, fighting, dice rolling, like mayhemish kind of game. Check it out. Worth backing. I think it's been up for about ten hours now and it's at uh, three hundred and thirty thousand. Like. It's going. Kabam. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so definitely back that. And then, uh, but don't back it too much because we want you to back Terminator on Monday. Right? Make sense? Sorry, Joe. Love you to death. But, you know, uh, beyond that, um, I got a giant big bag of dice here. I got all these giant bags of dice. These are for a Kickstarter that I have to fulfill now because this Kickstarter um, was with Norse Foundry and these are the Mod 6 dice for Magic the Gathering, which is really cool. And it's pretty much just the token dice minus one, or minus six, minus, minus one. There's plus one dice. Beside me here, you can see in the background, there's just piles of bags. Uh, it just keeps going. I got red, green, I got the, all of the Wooberg colors for Magic. And um, yeah, those are getting packed up. So that'll be for a separate um, update though. Oh God, I'm exhausted. I'm really, really like just coming down with something I think, I'm just absolutely worn out. I'm not a morning person, let's leave it at that. And I mean, neither really is Aaron. The only person who's part of the team who's actually normal is Josh, but. Uh, yes. Yeah, you're the only one that wakes up in the morning to be honest, but I'm not a morning person. And 
so I mean, like, so like sad, 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 like note here. Like last year, my my mother got into a really bad, really bad car accident. Uh, she's 65. You know, your body doesn't really bounce back from something like that, and she took some she took some damage. Um, and you know, the insurance, like any insurance cl claim, is you know being a little bit pissy about the whole situation and trying to like find a way to loophole it out, but. Um, doesn't really work that way when someone's legitimately hurt like that and when somebody was sideswiped. I mean, like, there's, there's things you have to do. I, I don't know what legalities are to talk about it or whatever, but all I gotta say is that, like, she's, she's, she's struggling and making a big, people are making a big deal about it. But the reason why this story's coming out is because um, this whole week, uh, I've had to take her to um, some specialists and stuff to go through some testing that has that have literally been an hour and a half away from home. And they, they book these things for like nine in the morning. So a normal human being can make it an hour and a half later at nine in the morning through 401 downtown Toronto traffic. But a vampire nighthawk like myself, um, who just can't, gets insomniac, doesn't sleep at night. Um, you know, the first day is kind of tiring. Second day, you're a little exhausted. But by the third day, you're sick. I'm pretty much there. I'm just dying. I've been there all day. It's, it's uh, every day is dealing with all these doctors and stuff. And it's been like, it's been a real pain because I mean, I got my computer with me, so I've been getting work done. Uh, we had a, some, we had a Lynn Banner meeting. I think you can see on the, on Sin Studios. Wow. On, wow, uh, that was, a, that, that, was, was that was amazing. Right? Yeah. You can see on Lynn Vander Studios uh, page, the, um, some, some photos of Josh and Aaron cutting miniatures together for, for the Terminator playthrough video, which we're about to shoot. Which that's important how the actual minis in the final game are going to be pre-assembled. Uh, yeah. We were, we were, Cutting, like, yeah, they're gonna be pretty simple. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, we, they were just doing these mock-ups for the thing, and um, you know, I was just a little tired. And then on top of this, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we bought. Uh, sorry, we we went to I went to Toronto all day, and then when I got home, there was this really cool um, gaming store that went out of business in in Kitchener, which is like uh, a city away from from Guelph. And uh, they went out of business, and the round table where we are currently residing behind picked up their entire stock. 400 to 500,000 magic cards. Um, you can see right here, I'm cutting over top, just a ridiculous amount of board games. Uh, we bought uh, about 500 different titles. And, um, and you can see here, just the piles and piles of magic cards. We had to fill up one of our escape rooms uh, with just piles of magic cards because we have no place to put them all yet. We've got all these shelves. The shelves need to get built. Uh, we basically cleared the entire store out and squeezed it into a tiny retail section that we have here. And we only have so much retail section we can use, so we've literally just trying to figure out how we're going to Tetris everything into this retail section of the store and utilize them as much as we can at the cafe. So anyways, you know, I'm driving to North York and I'm driving home and then I'm driving to, to the Kitchener, like, or Waterloo, sorry. I'm driving to this, this other city, which is like half an hour away. I'm doing this three times in a night. I'm going home. I'm getting like no sleep, getting up and doing the same thing three days in a row. Sob story, but it's not really a sob story. It's just like that's why I'm so tired. I haven't been able to attend to anybody's messages and stuff, which that's next week's update. But that's what's going on. Um, it's been actually a lot of fun. Everyone's been kind of working hard, lifting up boxes, uh, moving product around. We've had some really good help from a lot of people, and um, that's uh, it's been what it's been all about. It's been kind of cool. And Josh just reminded me of Reanimator, right? Yeah. Aaron, want to talk about Reanimator? I like Reanimator. Yeah, let's get Aaron in the video. Video, Aaron. Hey, I'm in a video. Well, Alright. I guess we share his head again. And I'm gonna get a, get a chair so I can be in the video for- I made it this way so it's shooting on an angle. So I'll look. So you get what matters in frame here. Okay, Perfect. here we go. No. You're on. I, uh, I'm, I'm less shrunken this time. You're less shrunk. I'm talking about Reanimator. Yeah. People are getting the game. Yeah, so this is about the sweet spot for for- because you were blurry last time. Oh, was anyway, it? Yeah. Okay, I, I look okay on screen. I gotta get my good side. I think I'm all right. Um, Reanimator is shipping, right? Dynamite received the game from China. And oh, did they already? I thought so. Didn't we hear people are starting to... I've just been seeing on Board Game Geek that everyone's been receiving their game and giving it pretty, pretty positive reviews. They said it was kind of easy. It's kind of sad because we're known as, for making really hard cooperative games. It is easy. There will be some mods to make it very difficult. They've been putting stuff on Board Game Geek saying, you know. Yeah, well, it's a story-driven game. Yeah, um, it's good. Like, I think people are going to really enjoy how the cards string together in interesting oh, yeah, ways. Yeah. Um, and like, it's a game when playtesting. We were getting through um, trials really, really fast because when you're when you're playtesting that hardcore, you skip a lot of the fiction and you just play basic no, mechanics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
but like when you're actually reading out every card and you're going through all the adventures thematically, like it's got full uh, full length to it and it's quite an in-depth game. And we just got news today that Drew, our buddy Drew, Drusilla, or as we call him, I like to call him Drusifer. Oh, well, Drusifer. I, I, like <laughs> I, I call him a name that he's actually known by. So is it Sheltered Drew? Sheltered Drew. Yeah. yeah Sheltered Drew. Ah, uh, he just he's <laughs> <laughs> actually we're lying. Sheltered Drew is a nickname we gave him. The nickname he prefers is Golden State. Yeah. He, so he Golden, Golden State, State. Yeah, Golden State. Uh, let us know that uh, the dice for Reanimator, the little uh, glass dice or the the red jade dice, they have arrived. They're in Florida, um, and they are heading toward uh, Dynamite's headquarters where they're going to be delved out and shipped with the rest of the product. Uh, the Reanimator fiction is going to take a little while. I mean, uh, John Helfers is writing the fiction with me as well as Hyundai Baruch Tuchul, um, which is like very... I've never even tried to pronounce her last name. Baruch Tuchul. I think that's the first time I've heard it. Baruch Tuchul. It's like, it's like she's like Turkish, so it's very... I don't know. Baruch Tuchul. Yeah. Baruch Tuchul. Baruch Tuchul. Baruch Tuchul. Broke to chew. Well, who knows? Hyundai, if you're listening, tell us how to pronounce your last yeah, name. Yeah, how do you pronounce your last name? Just write, <laughs> it, write it down below. Um, anyway, but Hyundai, she's um, uh, so she's writing one third of the story. Uh, John is writing one third of the story, and I am actually writing one third of the story. And the entire train is waiting for me to start its engines and finish my part of the story. The beats are written out. The the the. Um, uh, synopsis is written out. It's all been like agreed upon. We've all read each other's things and we figure out what, this is what we're going to do. I just now have to add some dialogue to it and flesh it out a little more and we got ourselves a finished product. And the other two will bang it out in no time. But they can't really write their sections until I'm finished mine. Uh, simply because they want to be able to take some of the nuances and, and add it in. So that's Reanimator updates. Um, yeah. I think that's it for Reanimator. Yeah. That's uh, it. Red Sonia. Red Sonia. Um, yeah, that's all and stuff's been to, done. To him right now. He's all red Sonya. He's got to do some updates on cards and... Yeah, I mean, we're on event cards, trying to spice things up a little. We're getting it there. Yeah, and then, um, there you go. That's that. So, what's the lesson we can teach this one? Last time we talked about networking. Networking rules, about when to let, when to let your, your guard down with your client. And yeah. uh, what, what, what do you think we talk? Well, we had a really cool conversation tonight over burgers. And we were talking about our strengths. And we were saying that the three of us, um, well, Lynn Vander has never felt this kind of unity, like this strength. Oh, we yeah. Are, we are the strongest oh it's ever been. Oh, my God. Like, we're, we're, we're making money. We're, we're, we're delivering products. We're gaining contracts faster than we can do either of the other two. And, uh, and, and we're working in stride. Like, we, we, we actually, with the exception of that guy over there who doesn't like to be on camera, we actually enjoy <laughs> each other's company. Um, Enjoy your company. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just doesn't enjoy the lens. Yeah. He doesn't right. enjoy all of their Come company. Come make love to the lens with us, Josh. No, I'm okay. Let's have a threesome with this lens. Come on. You gotta, you pop, gotta, you gotta, you gotta bump, bump those ratings for pass, us. Pass the, uh, pass the light here. Come so. give us the money, like, shot. Like, like Mortal Kombat, like, toasty! Pump up your head behind yeah. the light. Alright. You know, or you can show your hand. To prove that you're here, because you yeah. might think that... Then we're, they, they'll think we're... Hey, he's alive! Now you know we didn't phone it in. He's alive. It's some guy. It's okay. It's, it's jo that's Josh's hand double. Yeah. That's <laughs> the nice episode of Friends. Yeah, he's got such nice hands. What were we talking about? Uh, we were talking about lessons, lessons and our strengths. We're talking about our strengths. We're saying, so what do we have for strengths that we both, that's our strongest quality and that we enjoy? And those are the areas that we try to focus on, the three of us. And it just so happens that we all kind of fit in where, where one person is weak, the other kind of holds the strength up. Uh, you and Josh are kind of like... We just go back and forth, like you trading guys, skills and making each other better at things. Yeah, you guys are, are really, really good in, in terms of the game any, dev, any design, game dev, graphic design. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they've got the dead. They're the logic guys. This is Merch's favorite part about the breakdown. Oh yeah, because graphic design has nothing to do with art either. It's all logic. No, I'm <laughs> talking. You talk about the game design side. Uh, I said the game design, not the art. The art. Uh, uh, if you if you recall. There was an episode where the some particular character obsessed with art. That's true. And was trying to That's perfect true. it. We're going there? We're going there. Can anybody guess? It was an episode of Star Trek. <laughs> a certain android um, was trying to paint something and we kept trying to fix the painting over and over again. If you know who it is, make sure you comment. And this guy is like that guy in terms of his processing skills. Sure. <laughs> Not personality though, because that character 
doesn't get as angry as this character. So that's true, actually. <laughs> you, you you did touch on one of my favorite things about uh, uh, about game de game design and game development. Actually, uh, this is sort of going off on a tangent. It's a different lesson, uh, but that that loop he got caught in, where he was constantly trying and trying and trying to correct the painting, yep. it's one of the biggest mistakes people make in game development. Uh, in my opinion. Oh my god. See? Uh, like, one of the first things we learned early on was you get to a point where you are just tweaking numbers endlessly, trying to reach a perfect game balance. And yeah. what's, what's actually more important at the end of the day is user experience. Uh, so like when we're developing a game, you know, we, when we get the balance to like 90%, we could spend another 90% of our effort tweaking that balance and making it perfect. But instead what we spend 90% of our effort on is tweaking the user experience going, hey, is this a mechanic people are having a really hard time with? I, if, it's, if it's that kludgy, throw it out. Just move on, add newer, easier mechanics, things that people don't have a struggle with so that nothing in the game is getting in the way of you actually enjoying playing uh, the final product. I could have said. Does that follow a logical path? <laughs> Which means I give away who his character Glad is. Glad I could prove your point. <laughs> <laughs> a logical path. But wait, who is the most a hole ish character in Star Trek? Was it Riker? No, Riker wasn't really a hole ish, but he was kind of like. Oh, uh, that one everyone hates. I think it was Kirk. Kirk. Kirk is definitely the most. Like Sass? Yeah, oh, for sure. That's where I'd be then, because I'm done Riker, more... Riker's a Kirk wannabe, let's be honest. Yeah, that's true. Well, Riker had that beard. Sure. Uh, it was so stylish. Well, he... He's obsessed with beards. Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> You're you've, been you've been trying to get me to grow a beard. It's because I'm extremely jealous of people who can oh. grow beards. You see this? This is like see, two weeks cool of effort beard. for me. Cool. You should show your beard off, Josh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you can see it on my twenty-eight mil sculpted figure. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Let's show you. I'm actually curious if it will be visible. Oh, it is visible. Well, it's visible there. I don't know if it'll be visible in the mini. That's Josh. What a conceited guy. He has to put his face on the box. That's a really good portrait of you, Josh. That's a good. You actually, so? it, it, it does look good. Yeah. So I it, so let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit. Uh, oh, we're going blurry. There we go. No, nope, there's Josh. So yeah, people are like, oh my god, they put their faith on the characters. No, here's the thing. We had a chance to be part of Canonical Terminator here and do some cool new stuff. Who wouldn't take this opportunity? This is so cool. So that's Josh. This is the publisher's son, who's amazing. Uh, he helped test the game and stuff. This is Gwen Charlotte. Uh, she's taken from an actress, I believe. Well, there's no real connection, um, but it's, it's Aaron. So this is the, this is the closest I get to the front of that box. Yeah, and then you got me. Uh, I'm there. This guy here, and then you got the publisher. So if you want to know who you're dealing with, just gotta look at that. So we're super blurry, and you can see. And we're back. And we're back. So you're saying? <laughs> My eyes are watering from that. I was like, how much longer do I have to hold this? So you were you were saying about the, the infinite loop? Is that what you were talking about? Oh, I think I finished that conversation. Yeah, we did. He just said to me, we didn't finish the... Uh, the conversation. strengths conversation. Oh, the strengths yeah. conversation. Yeah. That we started before I did the tangent. Tangent's so, over. We're good. Yeah, but we figured out what our strengths are. Did we tell them what our strengths are? Did we not tell them what our strengths are? Um, we talked about me and Josh being the logic guys, and then I think we trailed off. Because we talked about commander data for a while. Yeah. Yeah, and I started talking about the painting thing. Remind I'm me trying to design. propel you guys forward and give the knowledge to the people here that you guys are quite literally the best. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's uh, true. So it wasn't about me. My dad always said I was the son of a god amongst men, though. So it's, I'm not it, the second best. It, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't all about me. It's not all about me, you know. <laughs> 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 I was seriously trying to pump you guys up, though. I mean, everyone knows what I am. I'm the idiot of the gang um, doing this thing. No, I'm, I'm all uh, networking and, and uh, contract uh, person. You're, you're and, a producer still. And I'm a producer. You started in the film industry, and then you moved to the board game industry, and you were like, you know what? If I treat this just like the film industry, our company is going to do really well. And so far, so good. Yeah. 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 Well, like the film industry's got hustle, right? You have to constantly be working. That's and true. Connections. So in movies, I mean, you are three jobs ahead. Uh, you don't get a job, and even in a sitcom or something, you don't get a job and you sit there and think, "Oh, I've made it. I'm good." You are always like months ahead, and uh, and and that application for five to seven years roughly. Uh, that sounds like a broad jump, but it is literally like somewhere between like seven years or so of like gearing up to gearing down. I was full-fledged movie. 
movie life, and it was it was pretty intense. I mean, I made some I made some really great money, and and I had some great times. I met some great contacts. I got to hang out with some actors and do my thing. And but uh, it was a lot of hustle. There was no sleep. It's pretty much exactly what I'm doing now. Um, you know, and I, I took a bit of a break from it, but um, that go getter mentality is what is what I think is what's making the Vander excel as far as it has been uh, the last little bit, if it is. I mean, I, I, on the grand scheme of things, you don't really know what we're doing compared to other people, but I mean, you can see what kind of products we're putting out and the things we're working on. Um, and this is all happening exponentially. Like there, there's projects coming our way so fast right now that, um, you know, Jeremy Piven uh, was an actor who said that he never said no to a job as he was getting big as he was like grow, going further in the industry, he just did every job. And so we're kind of in the same boat yeah. where every time a client comes and says, we need you to do this game, and then this game, and then this game, I'm like, oh, okay, 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 and we just do it. Which is a crazy position to be in. Looking back, um, seeing Joe and Jasko's Kickstarter launch right now reminded me of our early days when we were reaching for any contract, anyone to hire us, because uh, some of our licensed games for Jasko were some of the first ones we did. Yep, oh, well, Buffy, I think, was the first one. Yeah. Yeah, Buffy was the first big license we worked on. And, and then, we well, there, were, there were a few that you were working on before that that haven't really come to fruition. It, They're still kind it, of tied up, right? Was it Galaxy Quest? Yeah, Galaxy Not Quest was Jasko. started while working oh, on the same time. There were some older Jasko titles I thought that you guys worked on. So, this was even before my, me joining the company. At the time, we talked about some of the other licenses Jasko had available. Mortal Kombat. Yep, that was yeah, another one we yeah. were looking at. Um, Street Fighter was another license they had available at yeah, the time. You're cutting out there. Oh. Oh. Yeah, Street Fighter, well, Street Fighter, well, I mean, we, we, we actually, truth, we did work on uh, the Street Fighter tactics game that you guys are seeing on the Kickstarter for Joe. We were the original people that were working on the project, and then uh, when Joe came in, uh, it was just time we had other projects to move on and, and he had a different direction for the game and and we wanted him to take it and go on with it and he turned it into a pretty cool game. I mean, it's sort of really exciting. Yeah, it, it looks awesome. Uh, like we got to see some of the mechanics uh, in person when we were hanging out with Jasko a couple of weeks ago and uh, it looked cool then. It looks cool now on the mm -hmm. Kickstarter. So, so now uh, you've got on the 9th, April 9th, probably around 1 p.m. Easter time. Uh, East Easter Eastern time. We're gonna have uh, the launch of Terminator Genesis, Rise of the Resistance, and the Fall of Skynet. Make sure you are there, spreading the word, and uh, doing all the cool stuff, such as like backing it and tweeting it and Instagramming the photos of you backing it and tweeting it. And uh, don't forget to spread the word on Facebook. Go like our page. If you happen to like what you're seeing here, you can ding subscribe. You know, uh, and then uh, and make some comments. Like we, we love the conversation. We want to know. Uh, ask us questions about anything you heard here in this particular vlog. And um, yeah, it's, it's vlog. It's vlog. Yeah, I yeah. know. It's I know. I know you now. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be old. I want to be old. Old, but not obsolete. But I mean, uh, That's good. it was good. Yeah, it was good. good. And so definitely, uh, we're gonna end with this.